This video here will look at how we can solve radical equations. So we know what an equation is. That's something, two expressions that are equal to each other. And a radical is another name for a root. So it's, a, it's an equation that's going to have some roots in it. And so you can see here, I have a radical equation and I need to solve for x. One of the problems we have, and I don't know if you remember this, but you would know that we can do things like the square root of 9. We can say that's 3. We can even do the square root of 5 and get a calculator out and, and approximate that. But one of the things that, and we could do the square root of 0, that's 0. But one of the things we cannot do is we can't take the square root of negative numbers. For instance, we can't take the square root of 4 because we can't find two numbers that multiply together and give us negative numbers that are the same. So, what we do when we're solving radical equations is we just start with the square root. So the number, in this case, the number that's under the square root or the, the expression under the square root is x minus 3. And so we know right off the very beginning that x minus 3 has to be greater than or equal to 0. And we usually we call these the restrictions. So whenever we're solving radical equations, we need to first consider what are the restrictions on x. Because if I put a number, if my answer, if I work this all out and I get x equals 1, then when I put 1 in for x, this would be 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. And you just can't square root negative 2. So right off the beginning, we're going to say whatever's under the root sign, in this case here we have a square root, whatever's under that root sign has to be greater than or equal to 0 so that we can take that square root. So then if I add 3 to both sides, I get x is greater than or equal to 3. So when I solve this equation, my answers must be greater than or equal to 3. So let's, let's go ahead and solve this radical equation. And let's, we'll just make sure at the end that our answers are going to be greater than or equal to 3. Well, the regular rules of algebra uh, apply here. We need to isolate the x. So I've got a plus 1 here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to minus 1 from both sides. And that's going to give me the square root of x minus 3 equals 4 when we minus 1 from both sides. And, of course, the reason why we minus 1 from both sides is because that was the opposite of adding. And so if I want to get rid of a square root, the opposite of square root is squaring. So if I were to square both sides, the square root of x minus 3 squared will just be x minus 3. For instance, the square root of 3, if I square that, well, the square root of 3 squared is root 3 times root 3, which is the square root of 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. So if ever you want to get rid of a square root, all we need to do is square both sides. And you can do this with any, any number. Root 5 squared would be root 5 times root 5, which is root 25, and the square root of 25 is 5. So if I've got root x minus 3, and I square that, that would be root x minus 3 times root x minus 3, which is just x minus 3. So squaring that gives me x minus 3. Squaring this side of the equation gives me 16. And now I have one last thing to do, and that's add 3 to both sides. And I have x equals 19. And just like any equation, especially if you're doing this on a quiz, we would want to double check our answer. By substituting 19 in for x, I get 19 minus 3 is 16. The square root of 16 is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. And we, so we know it works in the equation. And we know that 19 is greater than or equal to 3. So we, we're within our, our restrictions. And we have a solution to the radical equation. So here's another radical equation that we need to solve for x. 
First thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our restrictions. So what's under the square root sign? That's negative 4x minus 4. We know that has to be greater than or equal to 0. So we'll add 4 to both sides. And we get negative 4x is greater than or equal to 4. And now we'll divide both sides by negative 4. And here's where we need to remember when we're working with inequalities, any time we multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative, this needs to be reversed. So since I'm dividing both sides by negative 4, these would cancel out, but it would now be less than or equal to 4 divided by negative 4 is negative 1. So whatever my answers end up being, they must be less than or equal to minus 1. Otherwise, they won't even work under the square root sign. Okay, let's go about solving it. Um, hmm, my radical is negative here. It's x minus this. So I'm going to move the radical to this side by adding adding negative, the square root of negative 4x minus 4. So I've added that. I brought that over to this side. And then I want to isolate my square root. So I'm going to add 4 to bring that over to here. So moving my terms around, basically I've got x, I move this over here, so that's x plus 4, and I move this term over here, so it's now positive, the square root of negative 4x minus 4. So I've isolated my radical, and now I'm ready to square both sides. So this becomes just negative 4x minus 4, and when I go x, x plus 4, don't don't do this. I see a lot of students make this mistake. They just square that and say that's x squared, and they square that and say that's 16. Well, that's not, that's not what the answer is. x plus 4 squared means x plus 4 times x plus 4. So we've got to go x times x, which is x squared, but x times 4, there's a 4x, and then 4 times x is another 4x, and 4 times 4 is a 16. So we have x squared plus 8x plus 16. And if you need to, just, just do that over on the side somewhere or on a scrap sheet of paper. So we get x plus 4 squared is x squared plus 8x plus 16. Now this is a quadratic, an x squared with an, with an x squared and an x, so we need to set these equal to 0. So I'm going to add 4x and add 4 to set it equal to 0. So this is x squared plus 12x plus 20 equals 0. This is a nice one to factor. Two numbers that multiply to 20 and add to 12 are 10 and 2. 10 times 2 is 20, and 10 plus 2 is 12. So now I have x plus 10 times x plus 2 equals 0. So I can say my first factor could be 0, or my second factor could be 0 which gives me x equals minus 10 and x equals minus 2. Now, what we need to do is we need to check with our restrictions. So looking over here, x needed to be less than or equal to minus 1. This is good. They're both less than or equal to minus 1. The other thing we need to do is we need to check in our original equation, like we did in the last question, to make sure that it actually works. So I'm going to take the negative 10 here. Actually, let's get let's get a little more room here. We'll we'll write the question down again. There we go. So we're going to test the minus 10. We're going to check x equals minus 10. So if I put minus 10 in here, we'd have minus 10 minus the square root of negative 4 times minus 10 minus 4, and that should be minus 4. So negative 4 times negative 10 is positive 40. 40 minus 4 is 36. The square root of 36 works out nicely to 6. But negative 10 minus 6 is negative 16, and that is not equal to negative 4. So we have what's called an extraneous root here.
So this solution does not work in the original equation. And the problem happens is, the problem potentially happens is when we square these square roots. So this is where we possibly bring in the extraneous root. And um, really the only way of knowing that is when you get to the end, you must, you must check your answers and make sure that the left side equals the right side. So we've determined that one does not work. Let's check x equals minus 2. So we would get minus 2 minus putting the uh, negative 2 in for x here. And does that equal negative 4? Well, negative 4 times negative 2 is 8. 8 minus 4 is 4. And negative t the square root of 4 is 2, so we have negative 2 minus 2 more, which is negative 4. Okay, we're good on this one. Negative 4 equal negative 4. So the only solution we have to our original equation, or sorry, our, yeah, our original radical equation was x equals minus 2. So let's summarize again how we solve radical equations. So to solve radical equations, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to determine what the restrictions on x are by making sure that what is under the square root sign is greater than 0. So take what's under the square root sign and make it greater than, that should be greater than or equal to. So determine the restrictions on x by making sure what's under the square root sign is greater than or equal to 0. So we're looking for a symbol like that. Then we can start by solving the equation. The first thing we need to do is isolate the radical term. Get the square root all by itself on one side. Then we can square both sides of the equation. That'll get rid of the square root. Continue solving the equation for x. And then at the end we need to make sure that we check our answers make sure that they meet these restrictions here, and put them back into the original equation to ensure that they're not extraneous roots. So if they don't meet the restrictions, or when you put them into the original equation, the left side's not equal to the right side, then we need to reject those answers. They would be extraneous roots. Sometimes we might have radicals on both sides of the equation, so are two, two radicals. And really it's not much much different. In this case, we would we could square both sides and simply get rid of them both at the same time. Um, but we do have a couple of restrictions we've got to look at. So because there are two radicals, we got to, we've got to say that x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. So what's under that square root has to be greater than or equal to 0. And what's under this square root has to be greater than or equal to 0. So this gives us x has to be greater or equal to minus 3. And this one, if we add 1 and divide by 2, we have x has to be greater or equal to minus 3 and x has to be greater or equal to a half. Well, if x has to be greater or equal to minus 3 and at the same time be greater or equal to a half, then collectively we can say x has to be greater or equal to half. Because only numbers that are greater than or equal to a half will satisfy both conditions. So our answers have to be greater than or equal to a half. So we'll simply square both sides. And when we square this side, we're going to get x plus 3. When we square this side, we're going to get 2x minus 1. And so by, by doing that, we've, we've gotten rid of the square roots on, on both sides of the equation. And we can now go ahead and solve the equation as we normally would. So I'm going to minus x from both sides here to get x. So x minus 1 equals 3. Now I can add 1 to both sides and get x equals 4. So checking over here, we're good. 4 is a number that's greater than or equal to a half. Let's go into the original question here. If I put it in there, I'd get the square root of 7. And if I put it in here, I would get the square root of 2 times 4 is 8. 8 minus 1 is 7. So root 7 does equal root 7. And so the solution, x equals 4, is the solution. Here's a word problem that involves radicals. Let's say uh, Fred's dropping a rock from a bridge down into the water below. 
He times it and he notices it takes three and a half seconds for the rock to hit the water once he lets it go. He also knows from physics that the relationship between height and time for an object to fall is given by this relationship. Time is equal to the square root of height divided by 4.9 where t is in seconds and h is in meters. So now we should be able to answer the question how high is the bridge? So we can put three and a half seconds in for time and that equals the square root of h divided by 4.9. So you can see this becomes a radical equation that we have to solve for. So <clears throat> Our restrictions are h is greater than or equal to 0 because we can't square root a negative number there. And this will be obvious. The bridge is, is going to be, the height of the bridge is equal to 0. And this is a nice question too because the radical is already isolated. So we just simply need to square both sides. And we'll need the calculator for this one. 3, whoop. 3.5 squared is 12.25 and when I square this I get h divided by 4.9 so now to isolate h I can go times 4.9 and basically get the height of the bridge being 60 meters. So that's how we work at solving radical equations.